Um, panel, panel members, uh, any follow up questions? Not seeing any, uh, we can move to our next speaker, Jack McDonald. Jack McDonald, are you available? I, oh, yes. Oh, yeah, I hear you. Excellent. Hi, my name is Jack McDonald. I'm 19 years old and I live in Dallas, Texas. When I was younger, my family lived on the Barnett Shale. Our town had 50 wells drilled with plans to go to over 100. Our house was just a mile from gas wells that released emissions into the air and regularly had spills. There were plans for fracking within 1,000 feet of homes and near my school. A cul-de-sac in the neighborhood across the street had several cases of rare childhood cancers. The health department determined breast cancer rates were elevated. My family moved. We were fortunate. Many people do not have the means to move. I first told this story at an EPA listening session on rolling back methane regulations in October of 2019. Unfortunately, despite near unanimous protesting from those who commented at the session, those methane rollbacks did happen. When I last testified, I was a, high, a senior in high school. I took a gap year in between my senior year of high school and college. During that time, I've had the privilege of becoming the Texas field analyst for Earthworks. In that role, I've begun to understand the full extent to which Texas has sold its soul to oil and gas. I've watched this Texas legislative session as the chairman of the Environmental Regulation Committee proposed a bill that would prevent state agencies from enforcing federal environmental regulation. I've seen bills that aim to regulate flaring die without even a committee hearing. Even bills just to study the impact of methane died. I learned that in the Texas legislature, climate change is a dirty word that even some environmental groups are afraid to say in hearings. Bill after bill was filed to protect the interests of fossil fuels, even to the detriment of the people. When 151 people died earlier this year during the winter storm, it seems that fossil fuel lobbyists saw an opportunity. They used the storm to pass laws like HB 17, which prevents local governments from regulating where their local utility sources its power. Even the few Democrats willing to say the word climate change supported that bill, despite the representative who filed it saying in a hearing that it was designed to target the climate plans of cities like Dallas and Austin. I was also able to visit the Permian Basin with Sharon Wilson, who does optical gas imaging for Earthworks. I've seen OGI footage before, but being out among those wells was a totally different experience. I saw tanks where no one had bothered, bothered to close the hatches, flares that no one had bothered to light. I visited neighborhoods where the smell of gas was overpowering. I knew work I had done as a field analyst that many of those things we saw were against state regulation, but clearly those regulations were not working. Even now, after submitting numerous complaints on the sites, we saw nothing has, on the sites we saw, nothing has changed. I worked on research understanding the extent to which Texas has failed to regulate its oil and gas producers. Through that research, I learned that oil and gas operators were failing to get permits more than 75% of the time for their flaring. That report, which Earthworks published earlier this year, elicited a response from the Railroad Commission. The best they could do to explain why 75% of flares were not being permitted was to say that those must be emergencies. Texas doesn't regulate methane. When a site has a release of methane, they don't even have to report a volume for it. The closest thing to methane regulation is those flaring permits. And even those, it seems like the state can't be bothered to actually enforce. I've only been working in this field full time for about nine months, but I understand the pollution that Texas and oil ga and gas communities live with and the dread with which the rest of the world looks at Texas and our outsized contribution to the climate crisis. If Texas is left to its own devices, it will bring the rest of the world hurtling towards climate catastrophe. Texas is an environmental rogue state and we need the EPA's help to stop it. Federal regulation is a necessity. We need the strongest methane regulation that the EPA can achieve under the Clean Air Act. I understand a plan has been laid out for a 65% reduction and Texas communities need every percentage point. Moreover, Texas regulators are not equipped nor inclined to regulate the oil and gas industry. They'd rather let oil and gas do what they want, regardless of the consequences. Texas needs to be stripped of its ability to enforce the Clean Air Act. Texas and the planet need the EPA to intervene. I'm only 19. I'm going to college next year. My generation needs time to be prepared to fully address the climate crisis. Time to learn, grow, innovate, and contribute. We'll gladly seize the reins when the time comes, but you've got to give us the breathing room to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
Any follow-on questions for the pan from the panel? Yeah, this is Amanda. I was just, could you provide uh, what bill that was that you said was preventing uh, enforcement of federal regulations? Yeah, the bill did not pass. I can, okay. I don't have the number off the top of my head. It was filed by uh, Representative Landgraf. Gotcha. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, we have our next